Hello and welcome back to Accessor Academy. So this is the part of Mo molecular biology and the Watson summary series. So this is this was only uh, this was only high demand. So because of that, I'm continuing this series now. So as many people have requested to continue with these and completing all the lectures, uh, all the uh, chapters which are present in this textbook. So what I'm using is the seventh edition, and this is from the chapter eight. So already we have discussed about the DNA structure, RNA structure, and the protein structure. That is the, uh, I don't remember the ch chapter number currently, but I think it might be, uh, I think it might be around uh, five, six, seven chapters, okay? Because those three have completed. And now I'm going with the eighth chapter. So this chapter is quite a, uh, quite a big chapter because we're going to talk about the entire genome, uh, chromatin, chromosome, how exactly they are present in the nucleus. So all this will be discussed. And of course, about the nucleosome also. So we have got many numericals also based on this nucleosome uh, assembly. So those numericals will be also taken as part of this Watson summary series. So stay tuned, guys, because now onwards, we will be doing the Watson summary series only. So let's begin with this. So initially, we have already learned the structure of DNA and how it has been isolated. So there is another video on this where you can study or where you can refer how exactly the DNA from different uh, species, whether it is bacteria, plant or animal, the, it can be isolated. Now, within the cell, DNA is always associated with proteins, okay? And each DNA molecule and its associated protein is called the chromosome. So what we see in the uh, microscope like we always make a chromosome like this right so it is nothing but your dna uh, wrapped with the proteins now this organization holds true for prokaryotic as well as the eukaryotic even for the viruses also you don't have naked uh, dna uh, uh, present in any of the species why because again why it is crucial because the naked DNA is going to be, naked DNA is uh, actually highly susceptible or prone to the cleavage by many nucleases, okay? So that's why this DNA is always wrapped around with the proteins. It is for the protection of the DNA. Otherwise, it will get easily uh, cleaved by these nucleases. So packaging of this DNA into chromosomes, it is going to serve important functions. Now, what are those functions? Let's talk about those. So first of all, it is a compact structure, right? And it fits inside the cell. So already you know that the DNA we have got around 3 into 10 raised to 9 base pairs of the DNA length is there. Now, if you suppose stretch it out, what will happen? It is going to be very lengthy, right? So in order to accommodate inside the one micrometer size of the cell the dna needs to be in the condensed form and for this only we are going to study how exactly it is being done inside the nucleus so the packaging of dna into chromosomes it serves to protect the dna from the damage as already mentioned completely naked dna molecules are unstable in cells moreover chromosomal dna is stable thirdly only DNA packaged into chromosome can be transmitted efficiently to both daughter cells when a cell divides. So just imagine that uh, the system of formation of chromosome was not there. Let us say that the DNA was completely open. Let it be circular or linear. Okay. Just imagine that you have got this entangled uh, DNA present. Now when the cell is going to divide, how exactly it is going to give equally to both the daughter's friends. So now... From this, you can understand that how nature has, you know, may, uh, has set uh, has set the uh, certain rules or the sequences so that it can be efficiently uh, transmitted to both the cells equally. Just imagine the DNA is not compacted and it is open like this. So you can see that you can imagine that it is not possible then for the cell to give uh, half of the DNA to both the daughter uh, daughter cells, right? So there might be a chance that the DNA is getting broken up. So many uh, errors will be there. Okay, so this is how you can, you know, appreciate the how nature has, you know, uh, arranged everything. So this organization regulates the accessibility of the DNA and therefore all the events in the cell that involve DNA. So if you have gone through the cell cycle lectures, uh, then you must have understood that each any regulation or any function, any pathway which is related to the DNA, it has got the series of events in order to carry out so that the cell functions uh, correctly in order to get the two daughter cells 
without having any mutation or any errors okay so half of the molecular mass of the eukaryotic chromosome is protein so in eukaryotic cell a given region of dna and it is associated protein is called the chromatin so small portions what we talk about in chromosome can be said that that is the chromatin that the thin fiber which we see okay the thin fiber in the decondensed form what we see is the chromatin once it gets compacted completely condensed okay then it becomes the chromosome so i hope the difference between the chromatin and the chromosome is clear to you guys okay now what the what are these associated proteins they are nothing but the histones so how many types are there four types are there okay and these histones these four types in duplicates form the octamer so don't worry guys we are going to study all this in detail this is just for the beginning so these proteins include the numerous dna binding proteins which is going to help in the replication repair recombination transcription of the cellular dna okay yeah so the protein component of chromatin it also performs dna compaction now why this is important as already mentioned if you stretch out it is very difficult for the dna uh for the replication or any function also so it becomes very difficult now uh, so that's why we need this compaction now how this can be done so we know that in the human cell we have got around 3 into 10 to 9 base pair per haploid set of chromosomes okay and the average thickness of each base pair that is around 3.4 angstrom or you can say that the distance between two base pair is around 3.4 angstrom in another words it is 0.34 nanometer okay therefore if the dna molecules in a haploid set of chromosomes were laid out like as this i was mentioning right now if you keep it open like this what will happen the total length of dna would be around 10 raised to 10 angstrom that is 1 meter and you know that in the uh, eukaryotic it is a diploid cell so that length gets double so just imagine one cell is having around 2 meter of dna so just imagine how a one organ a one individual one human having these many number of cells into 2 meter so it is just it is difficult to imagine such a person right so that's why the nature has selected this uh, set of events or the sequence for uh, condensing your dna so because the diameter of a typical human cell nucleus is only around 10 to 15 micrometer it is obvious that the dna needs to be uh, compacted by several magnitude okay so that's why it is important that dna should be compacted now how this is achieved so already now we know that it is because of the uh, dna binding proteins like histone so always remember histones they are also the basic positively charged amino uh, positively charged proteins are there now what are the positively charged amino acids so basically it is the lysine and your and arginine okay we also have histidine so histones are your actually positively charged protein so you can see in the figure also the dna is wrapped around this octamer made up of the uh, nucleosomal proteins or the histone histone octamer okay and this h1 the h1 is called the linker dna it is also a histone protein so you can see that when you start compacting normally the dna size is around 2 nanometer right now if suppose you compact you can see that in this much amount of dna has been compacted to 11 nanometer so eventually it gets uh, into the solenoid form and finally it forms the chromosome and you know that inside the cell in one single cell you can see these chromosomes compacted very nicely at the metaphase of the cell cycle right or the mitosis okay so this is achieved so the compaction of dna is achieved by nucleosome formation and by this nucleosome formation the compaction by 10000 fold has been achieved guys you need to remember this value that it is 10000 times fold okay now of course nothing comes free it is always a cost you need to pay so association of dna with histones and the other packing proteins will limit the accessibility of the dna since you are going to wrap the dna with the protein the dna is no longer free for certain uh, functions to carry out for example that time you can the that time the dna cannot undergo replication or transcription okay so this will reduce the accessibility 
uh, with the proteins in the replication repair recombination and hence the transcription of the DNA. Okay, so what does it mean when the cell is having the compacted DNA or the in the chromosome form, none of these functions are going to take place. Okay, so this is going to in get inhibited everywhere. So this is the cost the DNA is paying when it is getting compacted. So in the case of eukaryotes, there are no histone proteins, but they have got the similar basic proteins, which is serving the similar function. Please remember this question has come in the exam also, whether the prokaryotes have histones or not. So remember prokaryotes does not have any histone proteins, but similar basic proteins are present. So this is, I was talking about then starting from here, you have got the four different types of histones. That is your H1, H2, H3, H4 is there. So they form an octamer and gets wrapped around by the DNA. That is DNA is wrapping them around, okay? So you can see over here from two nanometer becomes 11 nanometer. Then it forms the super helix structure, right? Then from here, again, you can see all these are nothing but a small, you can see over here. So this is actually what we see in the uh, uh, in the microscope is the chromatin fiber, okay? And then when it gets highly compacted, it becomes the chromosome. So you can see there's only this much part, but such high compaction has taken place, okay? Now the chromosomes can be circular or linear. So this already we know that the circular DNA is present in the prokaryotes. We also have got plasmids and plasmids are responsible for conferring the antibiotic resistance to the prokaryotic species, okay? Now, eukaryotes have the, <coughs> sorry, eukaryote cells can have multiple linear chromosomes. So this table will summarize like what kind of species is having, whether the linear or the um, circular DNA, whether they have got single copy or multiple copies, or, you know, for example, they can also have the 10,000 copies are there. Right now, if you can remember agrobacterium tumefaciens, they have the three circular and one linear copy of the chromosomes and the size is also being mentioned over here. So you can just go through it. Yeah. So now whether it is a circular or linear chromosome, both case, it is going to have the challenges which needs to be overcome in order to maintain the uh, in order for the maintenance and uh, the replication of the genome. Now, what kind of challenges here we are talking about? See, if you know that in the circular DNA, when it gets replicated, what happens is that it becomes like this, okay? Now, this is something called catenated form of DNA. But we need this to get separated so that this can be equally divided and given to the daughter cells, right? So, for this, what happens? We need certain enzymes called topo isomerases okay in the case of bacteria it is called dna gyrase anyways all these will come in the upcoming lectures but still so whatever comes before you can just uh, get familiar with these enzymes and, and names so we have got the topo isomerases one and two one means it is going to make a nick or the cleavage in the single stranded DNA. Two means it is going to make on uh, make on the double stranded DNA. Okay, so it's very easy to understand DNA gyrase in the case of uh, prokaryotes. We say, okay. So please remember these guys. Uh, so the circular chromosomes require topoisomerase to separate the daughter cells, and without these enzymes, they will be interlocked or catenated. So this will be clear once you see the figure over here. Yeah, so you can see that type 2 isomerases are there. So it can undergo catenation, decatenation. So what, what does it mean? It means that topo isomerase can help in making the circular DNA into the catenated or the decatenated form, okay? So this is what happens when it gets replicated. So one is the parental strand, the other is the daughter strand. You can see that it's entangled, right? So this can be removed with the help of the topo isomerase 2. And why 2? Because both the double strands will get cleaved over here. Now, whereas in the case of topoisomerase 1, you can see that only one strand is getting cleaved, okay? And then it gets open up and then again resealed. So that's how it is getting, uh, uh, that's how it is able to remove the tangleness, okay? Now, again, type 2 isomerase in the case of linear DNA. So those were about the circular DNA. Here you can see the example of linear DNA. So in the linear DNA, while the replication is taking place, you can see that it gets, you know, so many helical structure comes. So it gets twisted. Already you have got the double-stranded DNA over here. One second. 
So you can see that this is nothing but a double-stranded DNA. Again, with the daughter double-stranded DNA, it gets entangled like this, right? So this can be removed with the help of the second tauco isomerase. So uh, yes, and then if suppose knots are the forming because of the increase in the length or in the case of circular DNA, so these can also be solved using the topoisomerase action, okay? So guys, you need to remember this because um, these are the questions which will come for your part B as uh, your CSA syllabus, okay? So thank you guys for listening, that's all. And uh, stay tuned to the Exhaustion Academy because right now we have started with the Watson series. So it will be continued till this chapter gets completed, okay? So keep on watching. And if you like it, please share and subscribe with your friend circle also. And any doubts are there, let me know in the comment section or you can mail me at exclusiveacademy1228 at gmail.com. And there is a Telegram channel by name Exclusive Academy. You can join there and also ask your questions. So yeah, thank you guys. Have a nice day.